Hey, how y'all doing out there? This is the letter coming at you from the Wild Wild West. Got a new one. Got a new one. The Tropin. The Tropin. The Notorious Tropin. Absolutely love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. This one has a design flaw and I still love it. This one is really a, a cool knife. And it flips. It, it flips better than the... um. The silver axe, the sliver axe. It feels really good in hand. It feels like this part right here, though, could have been a little bit higher. This part right here, because it makes the, because it's uneven with the other side, so it feels kind of weird when you got your grip right there. It feels like it should be even, but it's not. But it also is a very safe knife, just like the sliver axe, because of the way that. The, um, the flipper shaped and the way that your finger fits in here even when disengaged it's not going anywhere it's not going to cut you up so it's a safe knife and I love that I love this is my first knife with the Emerson with the Emerson wave feature and it works I've already tested it out it does work but this one I had to modify a little bit I might even modify it a little bit more because I sort of want to put a finger choil right here. Oh yeah, you see, I can put my finger here without getting cut, right? It's because I had to modify it. I don't know if you can see this. But you see, I, I dulled it right here. Why did I do that? Because when this knife is in its folded position, The blade is exposed. Part of the edge is exposed. So I dulled all of that edge. This edge right here, I dulled it. So I can't get cut by it now. And it didn't change the looks of the knife either. It still looks the same, but it's just dull right there. Can you see that? I'm, sorry, I'm contemplating on getting uh, a, what do you call it, a, um, a Dremel. Because my Dremel tool is kind of worn out. and I wouldn't even try to attempt to put a, a finger choil in here with my Dremel tool because I want a brand new one. Because I, I, I saw, um, what was it, Love Them Knives? I want to say Love Them Knives. He did a video on his. He has a tropin also. And he had somebody put a finger choil right here. You know, finger choil like, uh, like American Lawman sort of. Like this. That's what I'm talking about. Put one of those on this one right here. And that would, and after he did that, then there was like no exposed blade right here. So basically he just had somebody take all this out and turn that into a finger choil. And it looks really cool like that too. I, I don't know why um, Spyderco didn't do that from factory. Because it, it looks like that's the way it's supposed to be. Like it's supposed to have a finger choil right here. And you don't have to take out that much. It's just like this part right here. And you take that out, then that'll solve that issue. I absolutely love it. It's a big spider cup. I like it. And it's razor, razor, razor. It's razor sharp. Razor sharp. Absolutely love it. But do I love it more than the sliver axe? Do I love the tropin more than the sliver axe? Well, the tropin costs more. And the tropin has these beautiful polished G10 scales. An S30V blade with thick blade stock. Absolutely love this knife. It's a beautiful knife. It feels good in hand. And all grips. This feels like a really good SDU EDC. Y'all know what that means, right? SDU EDC. And it functions flawlessly. The only thing about this one, though, you got you got to lift your finger up because this um, the tab comes around and wants to hit you in the finger when you're closing it. So it's a matter of timing it like that.
So you just gotta time it. On this one, you don't have to do that. Because this one, when it's folded, the blade doesn't come up into the area where your fingers go. This one's made perfectly. This one to me is a flawless knife. To me, this one is a perfect, uh -uh, a perfect EDC. I would call this a near perfect EDC. And what other knives do I think are perfect EDCs? I think this is a perfect EDC. An American Lawman. It's been, it's been my long time favorite for, I don't know, a long time. <laughs> Ever since they've been making these. And Oz 8 is when I first got these. Because I have Oz 8 ones too. But this is my all time favorite for EDC, for being an EDC knife that I can take to work. It hides very well. As you can see, it's very it's been very used. I ne my knives don't get messed up because I don't go out and do thrashing things with knives. I use my knives for what they're supposed to be used for, like you know, regular everyday cutting chores. And if you do that, you don't tear up your knives. You know, so that's why that's why you see a lot of my knives and they look like they're brand new still, even though I've carried them a lot, because I carry them in my right front pocket. And I don't put nothing else in my pocket. So there's nothing else to scratch up the knife on the inside. And the only time this actually happened to me before is like I accidentally had something in my pocket with my um, Spyderco Manix 2XL. And it wore off the finish a little bit on the, um, on the top of the blade spine. But uh, other than that, my knives pretty much stay mint. The only thing that ever gets, really gets worn out looking is a pocket clip. Especially if you have a G10 knife. G10s don't get messed up. Not to me anyway. They don't really get messed up. G10 is very durable. and To me, it's one of my favorite handle materials because it's not like aluminum where it gets like a lot of little hair scratches in it eventually and stuff like that. It pretty much stays looking the same. This knife, this knife, I don't even know how old it is. I bought it brand new when they first came out in CTS6HP. Was that 2015, 16? I can't remember when it was. It might have been even before then. It seems like I've had this knife for a long time. I've been carrying it for a long time. It's been my EDC drawer for a very long time. It's one of those ones that I never kick out the drawer because I just like it so much. I actually, you know, use it. And the other one that's like that is this one. I love this one a lot too. 391 BK. That one stays in the box too. But this one right here, this is my new love. I absolutely love this knife. I like it because it only weighs 3.3 ounces. And look at the size of it. It's a full eight inches. I mean it's a full it's, it's a full size knife. Yep, eight inches. And the blade the cutting edge on the blade is about three and three quarters. And the blade is about three and a half inches. And you get about another quarter inch because it comes all the way back. So it's like almost a four inch, you know, cutting edge in a little compact eight inch knife. I love this. And this handle fits my hand like a glove. It fits my hand perfectly. I actually absolutely love this liver axe. And I said before this had G10. It's a, it's a, um, what do you call it? A, a, a composite handle. It has, um, it has a, a carbon fiber outer layer, then it has G10. It's a laminated handle with, with carbon fiber and G10. And the carbon fiber is not that shiny carbon fiber. It's like this. And I absolutely love it. It has really good grip. It really doesn't feel like carbon fiber to me. It feels like, like a, I can see little sparkles in it, you know, like the little metal pieces or whatever in the carbon. It sort of flickers in the light. But it feels like a G10 handle. I love the way G10 handles are. I sort of like G10 better than carbon fiber, to tell you the truth. I know carbon fiber is, a, you know, the thing to have, but I sort of like the way G10 is better. G10 and the other the other handle material I really like is um, Linda Macarta. Macarta handles like the one on my my Kiku XR I absolutely love these handles these are my first Macarta handles and I love them I love them
that and G10 are probably my two favorite handle materials. And I would say it would be carbon fiber after that. And then like all the plastic, the plastic handles like GFN or whatever. But you know, so you know, GRN glass reinforced nylon. If you do it right, it's really nice. Like this one right here, like the Trask, CRKT Trask. That's a glass reinforced nylon, but it looks like carbon fiber sort of. Absolutely love that handle. That's the nicest looking GRN handle I have. And this one right here, this is, uh, what do you call it? Uh, carbon, carbon fiber. Um, I think, I forget what they call this. It's like a carbon fiber and plastic mix. CF Elite, that's what I think it is. Carbon fiber Elite or something like that. And this is a nice handle material too. It's a little bit more plastically like, plasticky, like, um, GRN or, or GrevX or Zytel or Zyx, but it's like in between G10 and that. That's the way I could explain it. And this has a little metal flakes in it. If the light hits it right, you can see it too. I absolutely love this material too. So there's all sorts of good things to make handles out of, but this polished, that's a beautiful handle. So it reminds me of the, the polished G10 handles on the Spada. But they did an excellent job of doing that handle. It's a beautiful handle. It's a beautiful looking knife. I think the knife is beautiful, period. And the only flaw it has is how the blade comes up in here. But that could be remedied. I, I'm gonna I'm 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 put a finger choil right here and after I do it, I'll let you guys see it. Hopefully I won't mess it up. I do not wanna mess up this knife. So I will have to be very careful when I do it. Or I might just leave it dull, dull down here. I, I sort of would rather have a finger troll, something like like a little bit of a, a circle right here, so that when my finger fits in there, it feels just right. And I really don't want to see the blade in this section of the knife. I want to, I want to take all that out right there. But that'll be that'll be my next project for knife modifications. Will be this one. Centers up perfectly, functions perfectly. I love these, I'm starting to love the, the Spyderco compression lock. I understand a lot of people don't like these kind of locks. But Spyderco does this very nicely though, where it never loosens up, doesn't, doesn't get out of alignment. Because I've been, I've been playing with this one constantly. And it has strong lock up, and I think it's because they have a stop pin right here before that hits right here so it doesn't put a whole lot of pressure on the liner lock or I keep calling this a liner lock um, the compression lock the compression lock and so it's not like a, a liner lock where all the pressure is on the liner lock this one has a stop pin taking a lot of the pressure away from the liner lock so it probably helped the liner lock not deform and bend or whatever and fail so it might be a little bit better than a, a standard liner lock I know one thing's for sure. I like I like operating this type of lock a lot more than I do a standard liner lock. This knife works great. And then lash it out the pocket. That's the way to do. You have to pull your knuckles back real quick because the blade hits your knuckles. <laughs> the back of the blade. Awesome. Great knife. Another great knife from um, Spyderco. But Spyderco, this is a message to you now. Fix that. Put a sharpening choil there. I mean, not a sharpening choil, but a finger choil there. I think that would be perfect. I think everybody would like the finger choil. Look at Love Them Knives knife, the one that he had modified, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Maybe I'll put a link to that down in the um for this video i'll put a link in the bottom of the video to love them nice so you can go check out what he did to his and then you can understand what i want to do to mine i want to do basically the same thing he did to his absolutely love this knife though i love the size of it you know me i like bigger knives and this is a bigger knife this is a true four inch blade it's a little bit over four inches And 
like four and an eighth or something or, or 16. It's like really just a little bit over four inches. The total knife a little bit over nine inches. So this is a really this is a nice size knife as opposed to eight inches and three and a half. So this is a really nice knife. How much does it weigh? Yeah, CPMS 30V stainless steel. All my spider goes have CPMS 30V stainless steels because I don't get the high inside spider goes. Cause I'm not really, I'm not, I'm not really like a steel snob. C CPMS 30V is fine for me. It works just fine. I never had a problem with it. I know some people say it chips or whatever, but I, I don't do nothing where I'm gonna chip knives anyway. I'm not gonna try to cut, you know, cement or, or anything that you're not supposed to be cutting. <laughs> Because if you use knives the way that you're supposed to use them, they last forever. It's when you abuse them when they don't last forever. This is a nice knife. I really like the way this handle feels. Do I like it more than a sliver axe? This one feels perfect in my hand. That's the only way I can describe it. It's like the, it's like the cold steel American lawman. That one feels perfect in my hand too. This one... To me, I think one reason why I like it is because when I'm holding it in my hand, it reminds me of the um, the Benchmade AFCK that I used to carry, the one that cut up my hand, the 800 series, because it sort of has that, that same shape. And the, and the grips in it are really, really, really nice. And another thing that's nice about this knife, it doesn't look intimidating. So I think it makes a good work knife. A good work knife that you can use as an EDC knife, and perform all your EDC, daily EDC functions, but if need be, because it has this flipper, it's a safe knife to me. It makes a great self-defense knife because the blade's long enough to be a good self-defense knife. Three and a half longer blades. That's when somebody told me that when the knives are about three and three quarter, they they feel like it makes a good safe uh, begins to make a good. Self-defense knife. I would say three and a half inches, because a lot of three and a half inches are knives are really about the same size as the four-inch knives. It depends on how they're made. And this one has really nice balance. It's easy to manipulate in hand. I really like it. It's an excellent knife. Love it. Highly recommend the Sliver X. It's become one of my new favorites. I'm going to get another one to collect. This is going to be a user. This one's going to get, I'm going to use the hell out this time. I'm going to carry it a lot. I've been carrying it ever since I ever, since I've got, since I've received this, I've been carrying it to work every day. I absolutely love this knife. This is a new favorite for me. Yes, I would say I like it more than this one. Why? Because it's just more usable for me. This one I would carry as a self-defense folder, like if I go on riding a bike or something like that somewhere. But I don't think this would be a work knife for me because it'd be too intimidating looking. It sort of looks like a scimitar, like a folding scimitar or something like that. It sort of looks like the Ritual. The CRKT Ritual it reminds me of the Ritual, but not as flashy looking as the Ritual. I like this better than the Ritual. But... I think this would be too big and too intimidating for me to carry to work. So this one would have to be an off-duty off knife for me. This is, this, on the other hand, this is a knife I can carry everywhere, anytime, anywhere, any place. I, you know, any place that lives are allowed, that is. I can't say everywhere no more. <laughs> but I absolutely love this knife. This is a, this is the kind of knife that I think people will get and just have and use for years because I think it's that good of a knife. I think it's a very high quality knife. And I'm not a person that likes liner locks, but I do like this way this compression lock's made. Do I think the compression lock's a, a super strong lock? No, I don't. Do I think it's stronger than a liner lock, most likely? I would say, from looking at the way that's made, that I would think that it would be stronger than a liner lock. Do I know how strong these are? No, I don't. 
But I, I would say this would probably hold over 100 pounds at least. Can it hold 200 pounds? I don't know. Good question. But, you know, these types of locks with the, with the liner that, that's um, putting a stop on the blade, I don't ex I don't never expect them to be, like, super strong. But this one, it has a flipper, and it has a deep finger choil. So I know this blade, even if it comes disengaged, it can't fold back on my hand. If anything, when you have a good grip on this, it'll keep the blade from ever folding back on your hand because of the, the flipper. I hear people talk about they want to shave away the flippers. Why? Why would you shave away the flipper? The flipper makes makes this knife safe. It keeps it makes a knife that, that won't fold back on your hand. Why would you want to shave away the flipper? That's what makes this knife attractive attractive to me. If it if this knife didn't have a flipper, I wouldn't want it. Because I wouldn't trust it then. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be a knife that I can trust with my life that that you know, I wouldn't be afraid of it folding back on my hand like the like the like the Benchmade AFCK I had did with the liner lock, titanium liner lock. I would trust I wouldn't trust this one. But with the flipper, it makes this knife totally trustable. I would carry any knife with a flipper. A liner lock with a flipper, a frame lock with a flipper, any knife that has a nice big flipper. And, and a finger choil like these spider coes, that, that knife is not going to be able to, this knife can't, if I'm holding this knife like this and using it, it can't cut my hand. It can't fold in on my hand. It just can't. That's as far as it can fold right there. If I'm holding it right, that's as far as it can fold. It can't fold any further. And it doesn't even want to fold. It wants to, it wants to be in its regular position when you're holding it right. Flipper knives rock flipper knives rock that's all i got to say especially when they're made so, so the knife can't fold in on you one of my favorite flipper knives is this one the x5 why because the same reason as the spider coes it's got a big choil and this knife even if, if even and this has a plunge lock even if the plunge lock was a fail that's as far as it, that's as far as it can fold in on me so i feel totally safe using this knife I feel totally safe using it as a self-defense tool. I feel totally safe using it as any kind of tool. Flipper knives are where it's at. And I discovered this last year. I didn't always know this. I discovered it last year when I got my first flipper knife. My first flipper knife was the Cold Steel Luzon. And did it have flexi handles? No. It has nice stiff handles. That's, a, that's another great budget knife if you want a good budget knife. An extra large budget knife. I would say get a cold steel lose on it. Get the get the big six inch one. But I love flippers. Flippers with the big choils. It has to have a big choil and a big flipper so it protects your fingers. Big choil. Can't fold in on your hand, even if it comes disengaged. That's as far as it can go. Right there. That's as far as it can go. Flippers. Flippers are where it's at. Big finger choil. With the flipper. This can't fold. This, this is a deadbolt, so it ain't gonna fold it on your hand anyway. This, this, lock, <laughs> this is like a triad knife, you know, as far as the lock strength is concerned. That's the way I feel about the deadbolts. I don't, I don't work. The deadbolt, it doesn't need to have a flipper because it's a safe, safe lock type. And I, I have total confidence in not, in not being able to fold in on my hand. The knife would have to break before that can happen. It's not going to deform it, it would have to break. But this is a totally safe knife. Brian Time, friends. Got the big finger choil, see that? That's why I like these knives. I'm trying to show you why, why I like these knives. It has a big finger choil, so even when the knife comes disengaged, can't fold in on your hand if you're holding it right. Can't fold in on your hand. Brian time, friends. Even my little ones. Has a big finger choil. Can't fold in on your hand. That's why I like this knife. One of the big reasons why I, I, I got this knife. 
And my little Brian Time friends, same thing. Big finger choil. You can't fold in on your hand. That's far as it can fold. Whereas this one, even though I really love this knife, and I haven't stopped carrying it, because I don't know if I ever stop carrying it, because this this is this is the fidget master. But the downside to this one, if the if the access lock was to fail, you're, even if you're holding it right, you're gonna get cut. That's the reason why you want a flipper. If that knife was to fail, it would chop up my fingers. But I have a lot of faith in access locks. Access locks are fairly strong. They're not as strong as a deadbolt or a triad, but they're like number three. They're like number three as far as strength is concerned, and I've seen these hold like three or 400 pounds. Like the bed lamb went up against the, the towel war, I think it was, and held, held almost 400 pounds. And any knife that can hold over 300 pounds or whatever, that starts to be a super safe knife, a super safe Loctite. You know, 150 to 300, that's a real strong Loctite. And when you go over 300, that's when you start to be super strong. And the Benchmade, Benchmade Axis Lock has been proven to be a fairly strong blade. The only way that this one comes dis can come disengaged is if it hits hard on a hard surface, this lock can bounce to the point where the blade will fold. But if you're not doing anything hitting it on the butt end, you're, you're pretty safe. But I, I absolutely love the 391 BK. And I know it's not, I know it's not the, um, it's not a flipper, but I still love it. And ones like this, the AD15, when you hold it, when you hold the grip in it, it's not going to come, become disengaged because you're holding down the lock bar and the part that's cut out for it to hold to be the lock. So this is a super safe knife too, if you ask me. As long as you got a good grip, that is. As long as you got a good grip, this is, this is a really safe knife. The, the 8015, this 8015 light, absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. And with like a, a super heavy duty triad lock, like on the SR1, this is basically like a folding fixed plate. Let's, let's be real. This is not going to come undone. <laughs> this is not coming undone. This is, a, this is a very strong, super strong knife. The only thing that's stronger than this would be a 5 millimeter fixed blade, like a, like a, a Master Tonto or something. That's the only thing that's going to really be stronger than this. You know, it's, a, it's another big, thick, 5 millimeter thick blade, full, uh, fixed blade. But this is probably one of the strongest folding knives on the planet, the SR1. Absolutely love it. I like it better than the 4 Max. Yeah, I said it. I like it better than the 4 Max. 4 Max is too heavy. I took my 4 Max out of my box. And I'll probably bring it back because I'm going to do another video where I'm going to put um, the Snaggletooth stuff on it. But uh, I decided I didn't really want to carry it though because it's just too heavy. I love the knife. It's a beautiful knife. It's beautifully made. No problems with any of the build quality or anything like that. The only thing, only thing I noticed is that like the, the paint on the um, the lock bar itself, the lock bar itself, I think they just used um, like a tough X finish. They didn't DLC coat that part because mine's starting to chip off the the lock bar. So I attempted to take all the paint off the lock bar and, and put it back together that way. But I don't know. I'm not gonna worry about it because I'm not I'm not really planning on carrying it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, this one. The sliver axe, yes. This is an awesome everyday knife. This is the kind of knife that I like to carry every day because it's big enough to be self-defense, a self-defense knife. Doesn't look too intimidating. I'm sure you know some people might say the blade's too long or freak out a little bit about the blade, but basically, you know, if you were to show this to somebody, they, they would see a pocket knife. To me, it looks like a pocket knife. It looks like a, a utility knife. But then again, to some other people, it might look like a, a self-defense knife. You know, people that get freaked out about knives, period. I don't get freaked out about knives. So to me, this looks more like a self-defense knife. This one looks like an everyday utility knife to me. This one looks like a fighter. 
It looks like it's got the Emerson wave. The, the blade shape on it looks like it's sinister. It looks like it's rated for combat. It just needs a finger toy right here. But, you know, it works good like this, too, though. I just think it would look more attractive with the finger choil. And then sharpen the blade and give it a nice polished edge. That's, that's sort of my plans for this knife. Because I really like the knife. I might get another one. Because I think I might get one and just leave it stock the way it comes from the factory. And that, that could be the collector. This one's going to be the user. I want to modify this one and get to where... It's, you know, real usable for me. I want to get rid of all the blade in this area right here. I don't want any more of that blade protruding out in this area right here. That sort of bugs me, the way the blade comes up high like that. Into the area where you put your finger. Now, I love the knives. He pointed out, that's the way I found out about this flaw. I watched that video several times. And, uh... He pointed out to me, and, and when I saw how, how that came up and how sharp this blade is... If you just touch this area right here, you would get cut. And you know, you know, people like me who are always handling and manipulating and playing with their knives. <laughs> yeah, I do play with a lot. Playing with their knives, I could see somebody like me cut myself. So as soon as I got this knife, I knew it had the flaw when I bought it. But that didn't stop me from buying it because I love the knife. I, I like the Emerson Wave. I don't have a knife with the Emerson Wave. And the wave feature really, really works really well. I think it works a little bit better than the cold steel features, like the, the wave plate. I think it works a little bit better than that. Absolutely love it. All right, let me, let me cut this one off. But for this one, I would I would recommend this one. But if you get this one, I would, I would suggest that you do something about this area right here. I don't know if you know anybody that can have, you know, can professionally dremel it down or if you could dremel it down yourself you know this isn't a cheap knife this is a two hundred dollar knife so I want to be very careful when I do this and I was very careful when I, when I, when I uh, dulled the edge because I, I taped up the entire knife so the only thing that was exposed was the part that I wanted to file down and I filed it down and then I took the um, so my Lansky, Lansky um, sharpening, sharpening stones and I dulled it out and then I sanded it with some wet sandpaper so it smoothed it totally out and gave it like a polished finish. So it feels really nice on your fingers now. It does, it's not sharp at all. It feels like a butter knife, like a dull butter knife. Right here. But the rest of the blade is razor sharp. Absolutely love this knife. It's a beautiful knife. No flex in the handles. Beautiful knife. Beautiful knife. And I love the size of it. And I love the way it functions. Because, like, once you learn how to use these compression locks, they're, they're, like, smooth. You just got to remember to get your finger out the way when the flipper returns. Otherwise, the flipper hits you and the, the flipper will hit you. So when it comes back, see the flipper hit my finger right there? See the flipper comes up right there. And so when you push on the compression lock, you gotta let go of it real quick, otherwise your finger hits the flipper. So you gotta let go of it like that. You don't really need to wrist flick it to open it, you know, because the, the flipper itself will work perfectly fine. This one flips better than the, the sliver axe. That's the one thing that I really like about this one over the sliver axe is the way it flips. It flips like a proper flipper. Because I think it has enough detent where it, it loads up, it loads up, loads it up a little bit. By the time you you're a, are able to release the blade, it just flies out. So it really functions really nice. You just got to remember it has a big flipper, and so you have to move your hand out the way. Excellent knife. Now, can you can you? Uh, Middle flick, finger flick this knife? Yeah, but it hurts. Because you can't use the spidey hole. The spidey hole on this one is basically useless. Because like if you can see the spidey hole on that side, it's like you can't really get your finger in it. So what you have to do when you middle flick, you have to use the Emerson Wave. And you have to give it a little bit of wrist. If you do that, then it'll work that way. 
That's what I found. I don't like doing that because it, after a while it hurts your fingers. It hurts the tip of your finger because you're pressing in on, a, on a sort of like a edge right here. Right here. And it gets it irritates your finger after a while. Now, using a, using a spidey hole for a regular thumb opening, you could do that. That way it will open. But again, it's not my favorite way to use this because you can't... I mean, you can do it, but the best way to use this one is a flipper. And if I was to design this knife, I would just, I wouldn't even put a spidey hole on it. I'd leave the Emerson there. I love the Emerson. But I, I'd get rid of the spidey hole. And I'd put a sharpening troll right here. I mean, not a sharpening troll, but a finger troll right here. And that'd be it. I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Spiderco Tropen. T-R-O-P-E-N, I think it is. Tropen. Yep, T-R-O-P-E-N. Tropen. Absolutely love it. And that's it for today. That's all I got for you today. Did we weigh this one? I can't remember if I weighed it. Let's weigh it real quick. 4.1 ounces. 3.3 ounces. And that's it for those. I love my spider codes. I love my spider codes. But this is the first spider code that I got that wasn't perfect. All the other spider codes I've ever received have been perfect. I can't say that for cold steel or other manufacturers so far, you know. I've gotten a lot of cold steels in the past that weren't perfect and I sent them back in the cold steel. But the old cold steel, they used to send them right back and send you a perfect one right back within a week. I used to love that. Cold steel rock, their customer service used to rock. I don't know what it's like now, but in the past it was like really good. I absolutely love these. Absolutely love both of them. Peace out, Stiletto.